Our topic in this Sage Pastel Accounting lesson is the analysis and interpretation of bank reconciliation statements. In the example we're about to explore, we'll be working on questions that are very typical in exams for this section of the work. Let's begin. The information we've been given relates to a general dealer, Park Merchants, and their bank reconciliation statement of 30 June 2016. Our first question concerns check number 789. Now what is the first thing you should notice? That's right, it is stale. It is dated the 25th of December and we're at the end of June. It is already six months old. The cheque was issued to MP Aid Fund as a donation, but we're told the organisation no longer exists. We're asked to show the double entry to record the stale cheque. First, we know a cheque that is stale needs to be cancelled. So if we originally put it in as a cheque decreasing bank, we must now increase bank on the debit side by 750 rand. But there are two accounts involved. The cheque was for donations. So donations is the other account affected in our double entry. So we decrease donations on the credit side. For our next question, we're told that the financial year of Park Merchants ends on the 30th of June annually. We're asked, how would check number 1040 be treated in the financial statements? And you need to give a reason for your answer. Remember, pay attention to the dates on the checks. Firstly, you should notice that check 1040 is dated for the 5th of July. So that makes it a post-dated check going from one financial year into the next financial year. So how would it be treated? If the bank account is favourable, we add the check to the balance sheet. But if the bank account is in overdraft, we subtract the amount. In other words, we reverse it. Remember that two accounts are involved in a double entry. The check is also added to creditors in the note of trade and other creditors or trade and other payables. Originally, we showed that we had paid the creditors already, when in fact we will only pay them on the 5th of July. Therefore, we need to reverse it in creditors as well. The reason for this process is that the amount is still in the bank account and we cannot say that the money has already left our account if it will only do so on the 5th of July. This is a case where the rule of prudence applies. This rule requires us to present the most realistic expenditure and earning of money in the bank and the amount owed to creditors. Because the cheque is post-dated, it has not left the bank and has not been paid to the creditors. We need to show this in our accounts by reversing our entries. Now on the bank reconciliation, we see that one entry is for an amount credited which was erroneously debited by the bank. The amount is 1,550 rand. The question asks us, to state one possible error by the bank which could have resulted in this erroneous debit on the bank statement of Park Merchants. Now the bank reconciliation states that the amount has been credited. In other words, increased in our account as a result of a previous debit the bank made by mistake. So what are the most common reasons for debiting or decreasing the bank? We could say that the bank subtracted another client's cheque from our account, or they doubled or incorrectly recorded a stop order, or debited incorrect bank charges from our account. The next question asks us to calculate the balance of the bank account and state whether the balance is favourable or unfavourable. We're told to consider the bank error when calculating. We can calculate the correct balance by putting the transactions into the correct columns, that is debit or credit. Remember, an unfavourable balance as per the bank statement will be in the debit column. 
and a favorable balance as per bank statement will be in the credit column. Our unfavorable balance is therefore recorded in debit. The outstanding deposit we credit. The stale check we leave out as it was not supposed to be here. Both of the following checks are debited. And finally, the wrongfully debited amount is now credited. We can now add up the debit side and add up the credit side to find out if our balance is favorable or unfavorable, and thus where we would enter it, under debit or credit. And when we add it up, we see that there is a missing amount on the credit side. This means this balance as per bank account is on the credit side, which means that it is unfavorable. Let's calculate it together. 12,300 minus 4,650, which was the deposit, plus the checks, 1,365 plus 2,355, minus 1,550, the error we are correcting on the credit side, leaves us with an unfavorable balance of 9,820. Now, how do we know it is unfavorable? We know that it is unfavorable because it ends up as a credit balance. And a credit balance is unfavorable according to our bank account. Let's summarize. Pay attention to dates of checks to identify stale or post-dated checks. Compare the date to the information given and the date on the bank reconciliation. If a check is stale and no replacement check is necessary, then it is just cancelled in the cash receipt journal. However, if a replacement check is necessary, we need to cancel in the CRJ, reissue in the CPJ, and record on the bank reconciliation statement as an outstanding check. A post-dated check is one that is written to be cashed only on a future date. If the check is issued by us, it is written into the CPJ on the date it is written out, not on the date it is post-dated for. For a check written in one financial year and post-dated for the next, this rule applies. If the bank account is favorable, we add the check to the balance sheet. But if the bank account is in overdraft, we subtract the amount. It is important that in the process of bank reconciliation, you must also apply the accounting principle of double entry. Always identify both accounts that are affected by the transaction. Time now to test what you've learned in this lesson with a series of multiple choice questions. Are you ready? How did you do? Remember, the only way to do better is practice, practice, practice.